I have a delivery you for you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Amy, are you Santa? <laughs> it's from my hometown, Snowy Oak. What? James Hunt, why did you cancel the Christmas party? Come on, it's the most magical Christmas celebration. We could get a tree or some carol singers. There's no money, Amy. Lots changed. Why didn't anyone tell me? And risk you abandoning your career to come here? Your mother would never forgive me. We're asset rich, but we're income poor. Things might change, but this will always be home. I know I hurt you when I left. The ranch has lost a little of her magic. Christmas is a week away, so that gives us enough time for the choir to rehearse and for us to light up the house and get a tree. Yes! I haven't seen June Bug this happy in a long time. What happened between you and Jennifer's mom? Just couldn't make it work. How do you do that? You make everything an enchanted experience. She always did have that effect on you. I can hear the sleigh bells ring. See you around, Charlie. What do you think? <laughs> it looks like Christmas. <laughs> it's nice to see a family in the house again. I used to be so happy here. She still loves you, James. Don't tell me you haven't told her how you feel. It's complicated. Don't let the one get away. Only you can decide what to do. You are literally in the DNA of this place. <laughs> Magic happens at Christmas, and here you are. You don't have to leave Snowy out. My heart has never belonged to anyone but you. Hailing from Perth, conquering the world, Mercy Cornwall stars in the very sweet romantic drama Mistletoe Ranch in cinemas from November 17. You know and love her from Dive Club and a few other things as well. And she joins us here on screen watching. So lovely to be able to talk to you, Mercy. Ah, oh, so lovely to be on the show. Thanks, Simon. Before we chat Mistletoe, uh, let's get your thoughts on the Dive Club experience. When a show hits big like it has, what does it mean to you and, and the cast? Oh, it means the world to us. I mean, I think we have a group chat um, with the cast and we quite often talk about little interactions we've had with some of our, like, tween viewers and they've all just been so special because I think, you know, children at that age, they just really buy into the magic of of that world, of Dive Club and, and the characters. And so, yeah, we've just had some really lovely interactions with with fans of the show and we feel really lucky. From around the world too, it's sort of it's got legs. Not only does it take, you know, Australia to the to the world audience, but it it, it takes this great young cast and and what we offer down here in terms of our acting. So congratulations on its success. Thank you so much. Why the actor's life for you? Where, where did your desire to perform come from? <laughs> great question. Um, look, I have always loved performing in school. I was in the school choirs and the school plays but I just never really thought it was a, a viable career option. Um, I did the whole uni thing. I guess I thought that's what I had to do. Um, so I, I have a degree in, in law and history, but as soon as I finished that, I went, oh, this doesn't feel quite right. I missed the whole performing thing. I basically gave myself two years, found some great agents and then booked Dive Club. So I'm watching Mistletoe Ranch and... I'm looking and, and you know, this will give my age away if, as if the face doesn't, but I'm looking at you and thinking this is Deborah Winger with a bit of Meg Ryan. Uh, oh. I don't know. I don't know if you know either of those actresses, but but that's what I saw in your performance and your screen presence. Are there performance whose careers you're, you look to roles that have inspired you? Um. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, as you mentioned before, I come from Perth and Perth's a really small um, relatively small city with not much of a screen industry. So anyone who who makes it out of Perth, um, I, I really admire because I know that you really have to sacrifice a lot to to be an actor um, and you really have to want it. So I always have looked to the career of Heath Ledger. Um, and then more recently, there's 
people like Charmaine Bingwa, um, Josephine Langford, Dacre Montgomery, Olivia de Jong and mm. Gary Rice. There's all this amazing like new generation of, of talent from Perth that I would absolutely love to, to follow in their footsteps. So, yeah. yeah. That's a lot of great names amongst that crowd. That's that's a lot yeah. of talent. So um, with Mistletoe Ranch, it's your first feature role and you get to carry the whole shebang, like you're out yeah. there in front of everyone. It's thoughts thoughts that go through the young actress's mind when her agent says, kid, they want you for the lead. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> It was, it was a bit of a sh- uh, shock to the system. I, you know, my first role was dive club and um, that was great, but, you know, I really could lean on the rest of the cast um, as it was an ensemble cast and it was led by five girls and we all had to share, I guess, the burden of, of being the lead. Um, so this one was, it was quite a shock. I was like, I have so many lines. <laughs> I had to learn so quickly. Um, yeah, so I, I really relied on, on my co-star Geordie um for that so yeah we had such a good good relationship he's such a good friend of mine and so yeah very lucky to to have him to lean on well that I'll jump a couple of questions here because I wanted to ask about about uh Geordie in romance in a romance like Mistletoe Ranch there's such a reliance on on chemistry the cast chemistry has to be spot on your scenes with Geordie capture that perfectly now I'm assuming there were good times on set and as you point out he is, he's a good friend or is that all acting is he sort of really not that charming or likable um he is a despicable human and yep. I can't stand him and yeah that's what the industry says <laughs> it's all movie magic it's all fake <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we, we got on really well I think um I mean I he moved to Australia basically um, for this film for him it was a bit of a launch pad and I was moving up to Queensland as well from Sydney um, and so basically after the end of this film we were like where are we going what are we doing mm-hmm. um, so we really bonded over that sort of sense of like being a bit nomadic in that way mm-hmm. um, yeah he, he's his lovely guy and, and he's still a very good friend of mine and a very good friend of my partner's People talk about that strange onset experience of being close, of sharing creativity, of sh- and I'm sure you had this on Dive Club as well, where, and then suddenly it's gone and there's this sort of flittering away of these wonderful friendships that you had. I, I imagine you still stay close to the girls on Dive Club and, and clearly you have with Geordie. How, how does a young actress sort of deal with that sort of nomadic nature of, of, of film and TV production? Yeah, look, it's it's something that I'm still getting used to. I mean, I've only really been in this industry for since COVID, mm-hmm. um, which has been quite a shock because obviously border closures with my family in WA, sure. um, that's been a really interesting thing to to wrap my head around, um, the sense that I couldn't come home even if I wanted to. But in a way, it might have been a bit of a blessing in disguise to sort of force me into this lifestyle where, you know, I can't really just go home if I wanted to um, and, and kind of get used to making a home wherever I am and, and making friends wherever I am. Um, so, yeah, that's, yeah. Was a lot of Rhiannon's direction on Mistletoe Ranch a lot of let's do it again but look colder? I imagine <laughs> shooting shooting in Heartland American Christmas while being in Queensland, that, uh-huh. that seems challenging. It, yeah, look, I, I saw the film for the first time the other night and I was just kind of blown away about how cold it looked on screen and how Christmassy it looked uh, <laughs> because all I remember was overheating in my coat in February in Queensland. Oh, my God. Um, but a lot of movie magic goes into that and, you know, the sewing machines and, and the beautiful winter wardrobe. Um, yeah, Rhiannon, I just, I love working with Rhiannon and she just, yeah, sometimes she'd be like, you know, add a shiver in there or add a bit of a breath in there. Um, those sort of comments, which is quite funny. Oh, that's, and she's lovely. I've met her a few times and she's such a, well, I mean, she's one of the, I guess, the dive club crew that you work with on this film. You had Rhiannon, you had the producer, Steve, who I know, Steve Jaggy and the writer, Claire Harris. So I, I guess for a first time actress carrying that lead role, that's, uh, it's good to have that support system on set, which certainly sounds like, it, it, that manifested. It, absolutely. I think a lot of the pressure was alleviated by the fact that I worked with so many of the creatives and the crew um, for months. 
Mm. So even in the callback stages for this film or the chemistry reads, you know, I'd go into the room and I'd see all these familiar faces that I was so comfortable with. So, yeah, I was, I was very lucky to to work with Rhiannon and, and Steve again. This will obviously just play lovely with Australian audiences, of course, but the popularity of these Christmas romances um, is through the roof in the US and Canada where whole families sort of gather around the television when it's too cold outside. When Middle America falls in love with you, Mercy Cornwell, are we going to lose <laughs> you to Hollywood? Is that the plan? Look, honestly, I I just want to create characters. I just want to get on set and meet people like whoever will take me at this stage in my career. I'd feel so blessed to to do that. So if I end up there, then great. Yeah. Just like that. Just end up there. Whatever. <laughs> end up there. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, some fan questions just quickly. Any fresh music for Mercy and Mia on the way? Oh, um, um, unfortunately not. Oh, no. no. I know. <laughs> we we loved creating music, um, Mia and I, but um, she lives in Sydney now and I'm up in, in Queensland, but we're joking about having a reunion concert. A so reunion we, tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, reunion tour. Um, she's coming up, I think, in January just to stay with me, just to hang out. So we're quite excited just to jam again, even if it's just the two of us. That'd be lovely. Um, and, of course, Dive Club Season 2, what's the latest? Give us everything. Oh. Come on. I want to screen what you <laughs> No comment. No, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about this one. It's um, It's a bit of an interesting one because... The Queensland floods um, actually destroyed pretty much all of our costumes and sets. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Um, so I don't really know what's happening. I know that that's thrown a big spanner in the works. Um, we'll have to see. Ah, uh, people all over the world are waiting for it. So I hope it moves ahead very quickly. And congratulations on Mistletoe Ranch. It's such a lovely film. Um, it's going to be on everyone's Christmas radar around the world, at least for the next few years. So um, congratulations, Mercy Cornwall. And thanks so much for talking to us on screen watching. Thanks so much, Simon. It's been lots of fun. <laughs>